Hi everyone, we're back in black. Woo. Here to go on the attack. I'm gonna explore. With, you know. Oh, do not do that one. Nope. Let's try this one. Sure. It's level 10, I think we'll survive. Also, brothers actually, wasting what? time or whatever the hell we're called. Yes. Oh, actually. Yeah, actually. I don't know if you noticed, but the price goes up depending on the terrain you cross over. Yeah, that's why I'm going back here. Yeah, to do this. I think this is a wise decision. Whee! We made it. Now what? You should also check out the recruitment agency. Maybe new oh, people yes. have shown up. Nice turban, dude. I approve. Mm hmm. Lord Rada himself sent you to me. Unbelievable! The man who called himself <laughs> cast an apologetic glance in my direction after he scanned the letter of introduction from Drona. To be honest, I don't have time to deal with a stranger wandering in from the dark. I may be not. I may not be heard enough to war with the soldiers, but I'm still very busy. As if Talakaka had issued a command, the man standing to attention on either side of me, all readied their weapons in unison. I quickly readied mine as well. Hold! Oh, shoot. <laughs> Hold! If I disorder Lord Dolan's request, it would be spitting on the face of my father and family. More importantly, from the looks of it, none of you could match this one in a fight. So, Darling, Mr. Fluffy, was it I understand? I find myself suddenly interested in you f in a fight. With that, Talakaka Salali Rose. That's uh. a car alarm in the distance. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I shall accept your request for a midnight duel. Now show me the technique you have learned from Lord Drona. Oh, by the way, I was wondering. I know we picked the Scythe for Darksiders. But now that Darksiders 3 is out, did you want to get Ivy's sword? I'm fine with the Scythe at the moment. Okay, sounds good. Maybe eventually. You know, I'm not gonna lie, this might be racist of me, but I look at that guy's design and I don't expect that type of sword, you know? Because yep. it's like, I know Siegfried's fighting style had a much thinner sword that just would match that design better. Again, I don't mean to historically profile people who wear turbans. I don't know, I'm just saying that just doesn't look like what I'd expect this character to wield. Thank you. Goodbye. I wet myself. Tragic. <laughs> Not only have you demonstrated great skill and for some technique but also incredibly poised I yield great warrior and I present you with this Talakaka got gestured at one of his people brought over a package which he handed to me hmm. this is a weapon my father planned to present to Lord Dronos but I believe you Lord Ronos discipline are worthy to wield it. 
I wonder what kind of history there was between Talakaka fathers and Rona. As if they had read my mind, Talakaka laughed. Hmm. My father had something with a, of a rivalry with Lord Dronon, despite being the elder and more skilled. My fa- I just realized I only know the, the intro to that particular song I was imitating, so I think I failed miserably with that one. My father knew that one day Lord Drona would overtake him, and that terrified my father. Hmm. However, he vowed to be graceful in what he saw as an inevitable defeat in his will. He bequeathed this weapon to Lord Drono as a token of respect. But now I want you to have it. What? What's with that smile, you little Absolutely smug bastard? <laughs> Drona, <clears throat> Drona would likely be very happy to hear that. Woo, we got stuff. Yes, very, very, very disappointing stuff. Yep. And now that spot is gone, time to leave. Yep. All uh, right. All right. Do you have any? Oh, oh yep. there he is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Now, amusingly, now obviously, this person's meant to wield a katana or a Mitsuruki style, mm -hmm. but I think just to randomize things, they give them random weapons. So. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm just trying to remember some really funny examples of just custom-made characters that had weapon that really just didn't make any sense. Yeah, let's do this real quick. Really me this? The Ming Empire and Europe are connected by a long, winding trade route. Following it west, traversing scorching sands and treacherous mountain range, eventually I arrived at the great city of... Samarkand. Thank you. Samarkand. A rich place where people from all over the world gathered to trade goods and ideas. They say that you can find anything here for a price. But even in Samarkand, some things are still hard to get. What is this? I can't read this language yet. In a plaza in the center of the city, a group of people were gathered around the front of a notice. Is someone different? Well, let me see. I had some reward for those who present to me an item that embodies these words. The queen sits in the glimmering chamber, locked tight within the sturdy walls of her castle. She holds an orb most precious. Oh, what's the rest supposed to mean? Do do. I know who's behind it, though. That Western Lord, you know the one who's always doting on his daughters. I want to mom and want a food master on the way from me. We want some while they are gone. I I listen to the crap old chatter while mulling all the solutions to the riddle. Eventually I hit upon the idea um, uh, that this precious orb could be a pearl. That the castle would be the shell that protects it. A Korean weapon merchant I'd once met had told me about such rare food that Korea and Japan exported to the Ming Empire. Dried abalone, I believe. Abalone shells are extremely tough, but inside they shine like the rainbow. Dried abalone is supposed to be quite the luxury, the luxury item, but I doubt... Uh, cost was an issue with this lord. I should probably go see him if I ever find some. Okay, that was uninventful. Yeah, well, this has plenty of side quests, so I do actually think I remember finishing that quest in my playthrough. Oh, yeah. 
Samarkand, a city bustling with travelers and merchants. Here by Dion and Natalie, let us to meet with an informant who claimed to have information on the astral fissures. Let's go towards the lake. That sounds more fun. All right. As I relaxed in the cool shade of the tree, completely shirking my duty and even forgetting why I was here in the first place, my mind wandered to boobs and beer. But then I overheard a couple of men conversing nearby. You had a my ass? Mm, no, I can't see that I have. What are they? Well, I say it's an Amazon world, supposedly to lead to healing, immorality, or injury. And the rest of the brack we worship it all. Oh, sounds like a good bunch to me. With the world as it is, I need people that are out there doing good deeds. At this conversation drew a close, two men left. Dion and Natalie would no doubt return soon, so I made my way to our rendezvous point. Not long after that, I met up with Gro, Dion, and Natalie. To me, I met up with Gro, Dion, and Natalie appeared. May I discover a new astral fissure located near Brokrara? And it's dead, we should prepare to you. Flavor in your key. An unbearable pain launched through my head. That was the lance going through your head. I dropped my knees, trying desperate to endure it, and after a few moments, the agony faded. Mm, it's been a while since I've the power of an astral fissure. Can you stand? I, I, mm, I nodded and slowly rose to my feet. Mr. Wheel, when the preparations are complete, we heed it. Wee! Oh, good, a fight. Party. <gasps> Purifier of evil. As we made our way to the astral fissure, Dion leaned over and whispered to Grow. Sir! There's some time now! I knew we are being viewed, and the nerds seem friendly. Perhaps it's been affected by the fissure in Buka. That is a distinct possibility, though I loathe any delay. We should face them here in you. We readied our weapons. Moments later, malfested soldiers charged out of the darkness around us. Grr. And there goes your throat. Knockout. And there goes your... And you spun on your head like Hitmontop. on top. Yeah, sadly Hitmontop on top was just such a lousy Pokemon. Yeah. Even though it's like, I really liked Hitmontop on top when he first came out. I liked his design. I thought, you know, he could be pretty cool, but... Not only was his stats terrible, I just don't think he really learned very good moves compared to his other two evolutions. No. Although I remember always thinking to myself that Hitmon Lee was pretty dumb compared to Hitmon Chan because Bla there wasn't a ice pun ice kick, thunder kick, or fire kick like there was with the punches. Yep. Of course. That being said, this was also when I didn't really understand really how the type. Uh, the types actually mattered in the grand scheme of things, you know? Or heck, I remember when I was facing a water gym in... It was Johto, not Kanto. I kept trying to use Ice Punch because I assumed, well, ice freezes water. That's what all <laughs> the cartoons showed me. So I should be effective against water, right? I mean, hell, I don't think I found out what fighting poison and... Uh, fighting poison and bug were I'm um, a strong against until fourth generation because that just didn't really matter to me yeah. in heck I seem to remember thinking that bug and grass were interchangeable as a kid because I remember in a uh, Pokemon Coliseum I dropped I remember I dropped my uh, grass Pokemon for a Vibravena because I thought Vibravena was bug and those are the same things right not even remotely close I mean first gen they were kind of yeah. Now all you really needed to know was Psychic was broken and couldn't be beaten. Yeah. 
Which is also unfortunate because first, that's when Bug would have been the most useful, technically speaking, but good heavens, with the exception of maybe Venomoth, there are no good bugs in the first generation. I know Butterfree is okay, but... Ugh, just good heavens, if you know what I mean. I think it was fourth gen when bug actually became somewhat usable. Yeah, because second gen, when it came to bug, they added Heracross and Scizor that were almost useful. Heracross is still pretty good, but Scizor is always kind of skirted the line of being good and being crap, in my opinion. But yeah, I 100% agree. It wasn't until fourth generation onward that Bug became a viable type. Mm -hmm. Anyway, dialogue. He and Wins to wrench out. A malfasted, I thought, defeated, stood up and swung its sword at me. Tried to defend myself, but I stumbled as my head exploded in pain. Yeah. Grow sped towards me, arriving just in time to deflect a malfasted strike. However, the wild maneuver put him off balance, leaving him wide open. The malfasted next swing arced towards him. Sir! Before the malfasted strike could land, the creature froze. Moments later, it crumpled quietly to the ground. A woman stood behind where the creature had men. Ooh! You did this, who are you? <laughs> I see no need to tell you. Evil has been purified, and so I take my leave. Okay, bye. And with that, she disappeared into the darkness. And I enjoyed watching the whole thing. Check out that butt. So are you okay? Yes. Who was that? She was no ordinary warrior. Indeed, for the briefest of moments, I sense a strange power emanating from a weapon. We must ask our agents from this year. And fighting Pokemon didn't become useful until dark Pokemon became a thing. And dark Pokemon <laughs> kind of invalidated bug Pokemon for a long while. Yeah. That's an episode. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Oh, by the way, Kendall, this was the episode I texted you about. What did you do? You'll see. <laughs>